Hello everyone. Today I will be showing you how to make a color slash material system. But before we get into that, some of my viewers brought to my attention that if you change from the delete tool to the build tool while hovering over a block, the selection box stays there. This is a super easy fix, so I'm glad that these viewers caught it. Open the block placer script and go to the tool, changed function. Under, create placing, we're going to check if the mouse has a target, then delete the selection box if it does. There we go. Now that that's out of the way, let's move on. First, let's work on the UI. We're going to add some new buttons to the tool list, paint and pick. Setting the layout order to the tool number is very important. Now, go to the block placer script and make sure to add 3 and 4 to the key code order list. We're going to add a table full of the colors of the selection boxes. For example, for the delete tool, it is going to be red, or in color value language, 100. Now, let's test with the selection boxes and see which colors we want to do for which tool. For painting and picking in regular build mode, it's this sky blue color. I want to switch it up and use a lime green for painting, but use the sky blue for picking. Let's add green to the color table, or 010. For our final sky blue color, we're not going to use color 3.new. We're going to use color 3. from RGB because it's easier to use when handling numbers 0 to 255. Now, for the delete block, we only allowed blocks in the placed blocks folder to be deleted. But for the paint slash pick tool, we want to also be able to paint slash pick the base plate. Let's create an LCF statement to accomplish this. Also, Epic Tank actually commented on part 2 of my tutorial, warning me about the remove block remote event. I just want to let you guys know that sometime later in this series, I will make a video on sanity checks and anti-exploiting, so the remotes are a bit vulnerable to exploits until then. But back to this script, we're checking to see if the tool is either painting slash picking, and if it is, allowing the block to either be inside place blocks, or be the base plate. Now, let's change the selection box color depending on the tool number. We can do this by indexing with the tool and subtracting one from it. For example, if the tool number is 2, it will retrieve the first table element. If it's 3, it will retrieve the second. As you can see, as I'm changing the tools using my keyboard, the selection box color is changing to red for delete, green for paint, or light blue for pick. But there's a problem. When we change to either the paint or pick tool, the placing block stays there. This is because we only destroy the placing block when we switch to the delete tool. This is a simple fix, we just go to the tool.changed function and replace equals equals 2 to greater than 1. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we want the paint and pick tool to work on the base plate, so let's test that. Perfect. Now, let's create the GUI. First, add a scrolling frame into build GUI. This will hold the color buttons. You can customize it however you want, but there are some crucial parts that I want you to adjust. First, I mentioned last time that it would be beneficial to know the difference between scale and offset for size. If you don't, then use scale. Also, for the automatic canvas size, would recommend setting this to Y, or X slash XY depending on your scrolling frame design. Next, add a UI grid layout and a text button into the frame. The UI grid layout will control the formatting and the text button will be the color button. Get rid of the text in the text button so it's just a blank button. Now, adjust the size in UI grid layout. Duplicating the button could help you visualize how the format would look with the different colors and everything. Once you're happy with your size, it's time to set the padding. This will be how much space is in between each button. Again, I recommend using scale for this. Now that we've finished our formatting, we're going to remove all of the buttons except for one. Then, we'll name that button, color, make it invisible, and put it into build local. Let's make the color buttons actually appear. First, let's make a for loop that runs 1032 times. The reason why we picked 1032 is because that is the last documented palette number on the creator docs. However, there aren't actually 1032 brick colors. There are many spaces in between numbers. The numbers that aren't documented just turn to medium stone gray when attempted to be called. Because of this, let's look through all of the color buttons and make sure that there aren't two that are the same. We can do this using collection service. This allows us to get arrays of every instance belonging to a certain tag. We're going to set the tag later. We're going to name the tag, color button. If a button has the same name as the one linked to our number, we will continue on to the next iteration. While editing, I realized it would have been smarter to use the continue function. If you know how to use continue, I would recommend using that rather than my approach here. But anyways, if the valid variable is true, we're going to customize this button. First, let's retrieve the color using its numerical index. Then, clone the button and adjust a bunch of its properties like so. For now, the button is not going to do anything upon being clicked, but let's test and see if it shows up right. Voila! As you can see, this huge color palette shows up in the scrolling frame. Because of our automatic canvas size setting, the scrolling frame is just big enough to fit all of these colors. Now, let's work on materials. I'm going to duplicate the color scrolling frame and just customize it differently. 
my bottom scrolling frame is going to hold the materials. For the materials, it wouldn't make sense to just have a color button, so let's add a frame that will contain multiple elements instead. Let's also adjust the cell size. Once you're happy with the format, add a viewport frame into the frame. If you don't know what a viewport frame is, your mind is about to be blown. First, adjust the viewport frame to your liking. Then add a text label into this frame. You can place it wherever but I'm going to place it under the viewport frame. This is going to be where the name of the material is. Now, insert a part into workspace and make it nice and wide. Now create a part that is facing down at this part. Make sure it's facing the right way by inserting a decal into it and setting it to the front. You will see that the front surface is highlighted. You can then rotate the part so that the front is facing down. Now, create a camera in the material scrolling frame. Name it, Material View. Copy the C-frame of our cube part and insert it into the camera. Put the part into the viewport frame. Then, set the current camera property of the viewport frame to the Material View camera. I don't know if you noticed, but the viewport frame just got a little darker. This is because the part is now showing up in it. If we were to change its material, it would be apparent. I'd recommend setting the light color and ambient to completely white to make sure the lighting doesn't affect the part too much. You can also play around with the light direction, but I think it's fine as it is. In build mode, the material previews are balls, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to make them like that. You can adjust how much detail of the material you want the player to see by either raising the part up or lowering it. Last but not least, let's cover the whole frame with a button that the player can click on. Make it mostly transparent and get rid of the text. Name that text button, button. Now, make the frame invisible and put it into build local. Now let's loop through every material in the game. We can do this by running a for loop with enum.material colon get enum items. This is an array with every material in the game. But first, let's make sure that the material is neither air nor water because those cannot be applied to parts, only terrain. Now, let's clone the frame and give it a bunch of properties like we did to the color buttons. Oh, the frames aren't showing up. This is because we forgot to set the frame's parent to the material scrolling frame. Perfect. As you can see, every material frame is showing up. Add a viewport frame in build GUI. This will hold the selected color and material that is being used at the moment. You can customize the size slash design however you want. Duplicate the part from the material frame and insert it into our new viewport frame. Also, make sure to name our viewport frame, Kurtexture. Also set Kurtexture's current camera to material view. Again, adjusting the lighting on the viewport frame might be a good idea. Now, let's script both the color buttons and material frames. First, we're going to change the color of the Kurtexture part. Next, we're going to change the color of all of the material frames parts when a color button is clicked. Now, let's just change the Kurtexture parts material when a material frame is clicked. As you can see, as we click the color buttons and material frames, the Kurtexture part changes according to that. When we click the color buttons, the material frame parts also change color. Now, let's make it so that they actually affect the placing block. We can do this by checking if there's a part named, placing, in the workspace. If there is, we will paint it. Repeat the process for the material frames. As you can see, if there is a placing part and we click a color button or material frame, that placing block changes color slash material. Now, let's make it so that when you actually place the block, it also has the same color. We're going to pass on two more arguments on the place block remote event, the color and material. Now, let's change the color and material on the server side. Let's go to the block placer local script and make a few adjustments there. First, paint the placing depending on the kurtexture part in the create placing function. Create a texture part variable that retrieves the kurtexture part. Now, when firing the place block remote event, pass on the texture part's color and material. There's a bug. The placing block isn't showing up. Now, in this recording, I thought changing workspace, placing to workspace, find first child, placing, on build local would help, but it was actually a different problem. The actual fix is going on the block placer script and waiting for build GUI to load in for the texture part variable. As you can see, it now works perfectly. But what if I want to change or retrieve the texture of a block that is already placed? That's where the painting and picking tool come in. Let's work on those next. Add a remote event into the build events folder named paint block. Then, call it on build handler. The arguments we will receive are the player, by default, the block, the color, and the material. Now, on block placer, let's actually call it. I don't know about you guys, but my fingers are getting a little tired of typing up repstore.remoteevents.buildevents all the time. Let's create a variable for it. Now, let's use that variable. 
When firing the paint block event, we're going to pass on the mouse target, the texture parts color, and the texture parts material. Now, let's actually set the block's color and material when this event is fired to the server. Perfect. Now, let's move on to the picking tool. The picking tool is much simpler since it doesn't require client-to-server communication. When the left mouse button is released while the picking tool is equipped, we will retrieve the target's color and material and apply it to the texture part. Let's create a variable for collection service so we can access all of the material frames. Let's loop through all of the material frames and change the color of each part. Now, let's test. The picking tool works on the base plate. The picking tool works on placed blocks. The painting tool works on placed blocks and the base plate. Thank you all so much for watching, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed and let me know if you encounter any bugs. Bye.